Rapi. Ooh, 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 little toothpaste. Week one done. And boy, was there a lot of rugby. Please remember that this is the rugby update, not the rugby forensic analysis. Let's get through what happened quickly. France versus Marc Delea. These titans of rugby took each other on in front of a monster crowd on opening night. The All Blacks started like a house on fire and scored a great try right at the beginning of the game. But then all the recent bad habits started to creep back into their game. Running from their 22, poor discipline and the inability to match a very physical pack for the full 80. The French on the other hand showed that their favourite status is well earned and even with Dupont having a fairly quiet game managed to hand Foster another two records. The All Blacks first loss in the pool stages and their biggest World Cup loss ever. Italy and Namibia were first up in Saturday's heat. The Namibians gave a good account of themselves, with the only lion at the World Cup, Tian Swanepoel, catching the eye. Sadly, they were always going to struggle against the fitter Italy in the late game. 52-8 the final score there. Ireland versus Romania. Ireland welcomed back Mr Sexton in their opening World Cup game against Romania next. The Oaks scored first in a you love to see it moment at the beginning of the game, but then the number one side in the world did the you hate to see it thing. 82 points to 8 for the boys in green and a tough high score to beat for the rest of the tournament. Australia versus Georgia. The Wallabies were staring down a barrel of 8-0 under Eddie. They took on Georgia in what some suggested might be a close match in the second last game on Saturday. I was not in the Georgia might win camp and my Superbrew picks will provide the needed proof. Australia's pack was just too good and they ran in some lovely tries on their way to a comfy win. England versus Argentina. Ten points to Argentina, twenty-four points to George Ford. Japan versus Chile. Sunday's first match was between 2019 darlings Japan and 2023 darlings Chile. We finally got to see the much-hyped Rodrigo Fernandez start his job application for a pro de deux club at ten, and he did not disappoint. Fernandez and fullback Ayaza were a joy to watch. Japan are still Japan though, and they ran out comfortable winners once the French heat kicked in for the less professional players. Springboks vs Scotland. Next up were my dudes, the minty fresh box against a dangerous Scotland side in Marseille. I was nervous for this match, but like I said last week, if the box forwards did their job, then the much vaunted Scottish attack would stutter. And man did they do their job. Rux turned into running Nutri Bullets, slowing the game enough for Russell to get man and balled like a wipeout victim. Just like against the All Blacks, the Bok defenders were getting into the passing lanes and cutting off the outside space for the Scots. The big boys up front also drew multiple scrum penalties and totally disrupted the lineouts, cutting off more attacking platforms for Finn and his mates. On attack, the box were less accurate, with multiple fumbles in the carry and knock on showing that the ball was slippery and sweaty. Yuck. But with the Scots in no danger of scoring, two tries were all that was needed for the box to walk away 18-3 winners. Job done. Wales versus Fiji. The last game of the week was a banger. I've been told. I was asleep. Do not judge me for taking care of my newborn. I did manage to catch Fiji captain Nayathalevo score a stunner and then set up another worldie later on. From the highlights, it looks like Gatland has worked his World Cup magic once again. Wales were emotional wrecks, screaming after tackles and after tries and at each other in a super entertaining encounter. They went ahead and then held off a surging Fiji to record a great 32-26 victory. Game of the weekend, no doubt. Thursday, just now, sees the start of week two of this already awesome tournament. Eight games again, more late nights for tired fathers again. But which is the game of the week? Less to pick from this week, but Australia versus Fiji definitely sticks out. The Wallabies' wide defence has been a little suspect of late. The perfect thing for Fiji to exploit with guys like Ravu Taumada. Mm. The Fijian scrum is much better now, but the Aussie scrum has turned into quite the weapon recently. As a big blundering sapphire, I will always pick the team with the better set piece. So Aussie to win that one, which hurts my heart to say. I have not forgotten about the rugby perverts though, so which is the game for the geek? 
Again, a tougher pick until you scroll down to Samoa versus Chile. Hmm. The new boys Chile now have a game under their belts and hopefully the first round nerves are all gone. I also want to see more of Fernandez and Ayarza. They are coming up against a pretty tough Samoa though. Listen to these names. UJ Suteni, Christian Leoliofano, Duncan Payawa, Ben Lamb, Stephen Luatua, Charlie Faumuina and bloody Michael Alaletoa. I don't know about you, but those names conjure up 43 to 10 pastings in Wellington or Canberra in Friday night Super Rugby games. I am hoping the extra game Chile has played will reduce the gap between these two teams and then we'll get a cracker to enjoy. Besides those two matches, we have a pretty simple week of picks. France versus Uruguay. Oof. New Zealand versus Namibia. It's happened before. Wales versus Portugal. First time, but uh -uh. Ireland versus Tonga. South Africa versus Romania. And England versus Japan. Might be close. These all seem like foregone conclusions, which doesn't mean I won't watch them, my lovely wife. Please watch the kids. These games only come around once every four years. Any news come around though? <clears throat> Ooh, breaking news for once. I see that Tom Curry has been handed a three match ban for his poor tackle in the Argentina game. He can get it reduced to two weeks if he attends tackle school, which he should do and just get Owen and all his other friends notes. He will do so well. Mm, there were also injuries to Eben Etzebet and Tate the Snake, but they both seem like they'll be ready for later games in the pool stages. Thank goodness. Ethan Blackadder has been called into the All Blacks camp for the injured Imoni Narawa, whose World Cup is over. You'll notice that one of those is a winger and one of those is a flank, which is weird. Maybe Sam Kane's injury is a bit worse than we thought. Or maybe someone else who's a flanker is hurt. Time will tell. Mm, and finally, there's been some mild takes on Rassi holding up a Himalayan salt lamp in the coaching box on Saturday. I know the science behind their medical benefits are dubious at best. But who am I to judge how Rassi and the other coaches relax in the box? They need to de-stress. It's not hurting anyone and the guys on the field can see that the guys in the box are all calm and happy. More power to them. Seriously though, we all know fuck all about what the players and coaches talk about before, during and after the game. If you read takes about how lamps are affecting the confidence of players on the field, just know that they are making it up. Don't get too worked up about it. Just have a laugh. And don't get too worked up about this rugby update ending. I will see you all next week after every single game this weekend ended in an upset. My super brew.